Hello everybody, Drotchka12 back here again with another video, and today I bring you the Eros mid-season finale review. Yes, uh, it is finally here, and it was quite epic to say the least, and uh, we just got a whole bunch of really epic and, and, and insane things that happened in this episode that I did not expect Arrow or the CW to actually even try to pull off with this mid-season finale, because it is just... A mid-season finale, they didn't really have to go all out, but seeing as how the Flash uh, mid-season finale came out yesterday and really blew the doors down with the whole uh, Flash versus Professor Zoom, the Barry releasing his, uh, um, giving out, putting out his feelings and love for Iris, uh, not to mention revealing that Harrison Wells is actually Professor Zoom. A lot of shit went down, went down, and tonight is no different. Uh, you guess, I guess you can consider this the Christmas special of Arrow, if there ever was gonna be. And what, what a hell of a fucking Christmas gift was this, uh, Jesus. Anyways, uh, let's get right down to it. Today is Wednesday night, and I'm giving you my mid-season finale review. My review of Arrow Season 3, Episode 9, titled The Climb. Now let's get started on this. Uh, first off, uh, the, the overall episode starts off with pretty much, uh, various, you know... Uh, montages of Stephen Amell, uh, aka Oliver, basically traveling up the mountain to face off against Raj Al Ghul because Raj Al Ghul and the League of Assassins has put down the gauntlet towards Oliver and told him that if he did not capture Sarah Lance's killer within 48 hours, essentially they would all hell would break loose, shit hits the fan, League of Assassins go ape shit on Starling City and, and people die. So essentially Oliver has to find a way to discover who is the person who killed Sarah Lance. And on top of that, we also got some subplots with um with Ray Palmer and Felicity. Apparently uh they still have a lot to deal with with their whole uh kissing scenario and why, you know, it kinda ended on bad terms, sort of. And on top of that, we also got a subplot between uh, Laurel and her mother, and basically her trying to tell her uh, that Sarah's dead. And uh, on top of all that, Raj Al Ghul is in the wings. He's fucking waiting. He's fucking dueling. He's fucking doing shit done. He's getting shit done. He's a badass. So let's get started on this. Uh, first off, I have to point out the obvious. And uh, I, all of you know that I was hinting at this, and you all knew I was going to talk shit, but here it comes. Arrow mid-season finale. They should call it Batman with Arrow characters. That's what they fucking should do it, because that's what the overall episode was. It was essentially a Batman storyline, except take out Batman, because CW fucking sadly cannot use Batman, which is sad and depressing, but uh, what are you going to do? Um, ben Affleck is Batman. No one else can play Batman, unfortunately, except for that freaking kid in Gotham, for God's sakes. But CW, the superior channel that puts out high quality comic book related stuff on TV is incapable of using the top players in the DC universe like Superman and Batman and unfortunately it doesn't really help out with this situation because it is a heavy Raj Al Ghul storyline it is actually the the opening sequence of Raj Al Ghul in the Batman uh, mythos where Raj Al Ghul opens up a duel towards Batman and they have that really climactic awesome fight from the comic books where Raj Al Ghul and Batman are fighting shirtless and, ha and Batman just has that fucking nice hairy chest I'm just saying people it's awesome it's a little it's a little it's all it's a little on the fence but it's Batman it's comic book you just gotta love it I'm just saying Batman shirtless hairy ass chest fucking wearing the cowl I want that as a toy. I want that as a statue somewhere in my desk, but it's it's not, unfortunately. But nevertheless, CW is incapable of doing that. Why? They can't use Batman. So sadly, we have to... What's the next best thing? Green Arrow, okay? There you go. So unfortunately, the entire storyline between Raj Al Ghul and Batman is replaced with Arrow, and uh, it works to their advantage because at least they got to do some kind of stuff that you know, we like to, we like from the comic books, but as a hardcore Batman fan who doesn't give an inch to anybody who copycats from Batman, uh, f especially seeing as how Arrow has plenty of other storylines and characters that they can fuck around with. I mean, like, hell, Malcolm, hey, uh, fuck, hey, Merlin, he's, you know, he's still over there, but you're dealing with League of Assassins, you know, a group that doesn't belong in your universe. Okay. I'm just saying, people, it's just... It's a Batman storyline, and it doesn't have freaking Batman. 
How does that not depress people? How am I not... Why am I not seeing tons of vlogs of people talking shit about this? But I guess I'm the only one. I'm the only one, I'm the only one who has to wear the red shirt in a fucking... In the fucking party. So, anyways. But overall, the episode was pretty badass. We got the big... A reveal as to who was Sarah Lance's killer, and unfortunately, it was not Raj Al Ghul or anybody affiliated with uh, League of Assassins. Apparently, it was Thea. Yes, apparently, the whole time it was Thea who killed Oliver. Um, Oliver who killed Sarah, and um, they explained what was going on. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't really get into that. Like, it was it was an interesting topic, but I felt like that that plot point only worked for the sake of that one episode. Like, for the whole scheme of things, it feels kind of like a cheap cop-out, you know? But in the scheme of this episode, it works to their advantage. But for the scheme, but for the scope of the season, it doesn't really make any sense. But overall, uh, they explain it in the show, apparently during their times in Quarter Maltese, uh, Malcolm takes Thea back to Starling City to execute Sarah for reasons that are unknown and uses this mind controlling uh device that is uh or drug or whatever that is explained in the flashbacks and yes we do get some more flashbacks by the way apparently uses that on thea so she could kill uh sarah so apparently she, merlin could use that against oliver so apparently they they come to the point where oliver discusses as to who could be the killer of course they sent the la the, the lab results to to central city and uh, they gave it back, and apparently it was Oliver's DNA, but um, obviously Oliver didn't do it. So the only answer is, of course, Thea, because she's her, she's the only living relative of Oliver, excluding the whole, you know, child in Central City, wink, wink. But anyways, that's a whole nother topic. But, yes, Thea did kill Sarah. I was not expecting that by any stretch of the imagination. The whole time I thought it was Raj Al Ghul, because obviously, you know, Raj Al Ghul just sem seemed like... He wouldn't give a shit about Sarah because, you know, that whole conversation that he had about like, oh, well, she was really never one of us kind of thing. But uh, apparently not. It was Thea th through mind control. So, yeah, I guess that's an interesting and intricate plot point that they could have done somewhere down the line, but not now. But anyways, overall, Oliver has to make the big decision as to whether or not he should uh, throw Thea to the wolves or just take her place and face off against Raj Ghul, And he decides just to sacrifice himself for Thea and just take on Raj Al Ghul in a duel to the death. So, yeah, that was pretty interesting. Um, on top of that, uh, Laurel has her relationship with her mother and basically talks about, you know, about Sarah being dead, but apparently, you know, Detective Lance still doesn't know. I find it ironic. What is Tech? I don't know why, but uh, every time Detective Lance is on screen, I always kind of find it that it's like, what do you do anymore? You don't really do any... Like, in Season 2, he had a lot to do. But in this season, it's like... He's hardly in any episodes. It's like, either use him or don't. You know, it's like he's almost like just the, the guy you talk to for five seconds and just leave him alone. I just find that weird. But uh, overall, uh, the whole Laurel thing was boring. I, I don't find it necessary that they had to do it. The whole Laurel and, his, and her mother thing was just stupid. I didn't really like it. Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you can agree with me because Laurel's arc during the course of the season hasn't been the best arc uh, that anybody can... I'm pretty sure... I mean, I know there's Laurel fans out there, and, and I like the actress, but yeah, her arc during this season and her overall sequences in this episode just were whatever to me. They, I, I could have... I could have I could have dealt with more Raj Al Ghul than Laurel, in my personal opinion. Like the whole sequence she had with her mother and the whole like is like you make them pay and it's like uh, it's like uh, where's Raj Al Ghul? Get the swords. I'm just saying that's just me, but whatever. Anyways, on top of that, uh, we finally get Ray Palmer action and apparently he reveals to uh, Felicity his origin story about how his wife was killed during the raids in season two. Uh, with the Mir Kuru soldiers, uh, which was pretty interesting. And uh, he also reveals to Felicity his overall plans with Starling City. And he reveals to her his shrinking technology. Yes, uh, we don't actually get a demonstration to the shrinking technology, but he does mention what it could be used for and what he could do with it, and also reveals the Atom suit to her. So... Yeah, that was pretty badass. We get another good look at the fucking Adam suit, and I 
God, I can't wait till I see that shit. I was hoping that he would put on the suit in this episode, but I guess that was a little too, you know, like, fan, you know, service. You know, I guess they're waiting for the back half of the season to really reveal the Adam suit in action. So, I guess we're going to have to wait a little longer for that front, but I think it was good that Ray Palmer finally revealed his overall plans with somebody, and who better yet than Felicity. And I love her reaction, where it's like, why does this keep happening to me? I don't know, but... You know, you're the one, I don't know. It is funny, but it is ironically true. But anyways, uh, overall, it was pretty cool to see that. Uh, once again, sadly, unlike the, the Firestorm scenario, we don't really get to see the Atom or see the Atom, you know, actually do anything. But overall, it was good to see the suit again. I can't wait till they actually show us. Now let's get to the flashback sequences. We get on that more torture stuff. Um, apparently, uh... Maceo is apparently in real time. Yes, we get to see him. And he's a part of the League of Assassins. Who knew that was going to happen? I had no fucking clue. Uh, apparently, something happens in the Hong Kong uh, uh, flashbacks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Apparently, something uh, may happen to his family. Uh, we got a good sequence where Katana was fighting against the, the, the chick with the white hair uh, who was in Season 2. I forget her name. Uh, I'm probably going to get it, you know, totally screwed over here, but I, I really don't even remember her name. In the comment section below, remind me what her name was. I completely forgot. I'm sorry. I know she was in season two, and I remember the episode she was in, but I don't remember her name. So please remind me uh, her, her name in the comment section below. But um, overall, she has a fight with Katana and takes her away. And apparently, maybe she might die. And maybe uh, Maceo's son might die too. So possibly that may be the reason, which is really sad because... Even though, like, Katana hasn't really got to do a lot in this season, I was kind of hoping she would be in real time in full-on Katana costume, you know? Like, that's just, you know, the way she's in the comics. But, you know, Arrow has a way of doing things uh, that's different from the comic books, specifically characters that aren't from their universe, so I get what they're doing, but I don't know. I, w I was personally hoping that, you know, she wouldn't die. But basically from the conversations that he has with Oliver... It's basically hinting, uh, hit, it's hinting, uh, hinted that they are possibly not alive anymore. Or possibly not alive to him anymore. So, it's a real big issue. Maybe something really sketchy happened between them. I don't know. It really depends. But, uh, it's really interesting to say the least. Overall, we get to the climax of the scene, of the overall episode. Apparently, uh, Oliver ends up doing the climb, which is basically the overall gist of the episode. The climb is basically uh, the big title and metaphor of the episode of Oliver climbing the mountain to face Raj al Ghul. And the fight between the two, even though it's stolen from Batman, and I have big problems with that, um, which I'm sure tons of other Batman fans are, but it was pretty badass. Uh, we all know that Arrow does a great job with their stunt um, action, and uh, it was really well done. It was pretty badass. The fight between Raj al Ghul and Oliver was awesome. Uh, I just love Raj al Ghul in this episode. It was a full-on Raj al Ghul moment. You know, it was just full-on him doing what he has to do, being superior to everyone in the room. And just being an expert killer. You know, he just doesn't fuck around. And that's why I love the character from the Batman you know, Rogues Gallery. He's just a badass, you know. And he's just, you know, an expert fighter. You know, the only one who can take him down is Batman. So, it makes sense. Overall, uh, Raj al Ghul did a great job. The actor who plays Raj al Ghul did a great job. He was awesome. I loved all his... Uh, his uh, dialogue that he's that he gives with uh oliver and i loved his reaction uh when he first meets oliver where he was just like he you're just a boy i thought that was kind of funny where it's like you know raja Gu is so old in comparison to oliver that he just looks at him and even though oliver has been through the been through the ringer you know he's been through all that shit with the island all that shit with the hong kong all the shit with the uh, deathstroke and and slade wilson you know, all the shit during Starling City. Like, he's been through a lot of shit, but in the eyes of the demon's head, he still is a child in comparison. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, another interesting thing about Raj al Ghul is that he also gives a little bit of hints towards his origin, uh, which was interesting. And I also liked how he talked about that he hasn't been in a duel against uh, someone who's challenged him in a match uh, for, for over 60 years. So, does that mean that 
Batman never fought Ra's al Ghul in the CW universe? Granted, we all know that CW can't use Batman, but we all know that they did fight. So, does that mean... And also, we did get those Bruce Wayne Easter eggs from The Flash, which is a part of the universe. So, I don't know. Let me know what you personally think. Does Batman or Bruce Wayne actually exist? And if Bruce Wayne does exist, is he the Batman? Let me know what you personally think in the comment section below. Because we do know that Bruce Wayne, or at least the Wayne family, does live in that universe. We do know. We saw based off the Flash Easter eggs. So, I really don't know. It, it was really weird. I mean, I know CW can't do Batman, but I would have liked at least a hint. You know, saying like, oh, I haven't been challenged since... You know, the last time I, I fought against the detective, you know, because we all know that Raj al Ghul um, uh, caused Bruce Wayne or Batman by the detective. He always talks to him as the detective. He, he, he addresses him as the, as the detective. So I thought that would have been a cool Easter egg that they could have done. And it would have, you know, not really been a big deal. You know, they didn't really have to reveal Batman, but it would have it been cool if they did it. You know, th that's just my personal opinion. Let me know what you personally think. But overall, the action was awesome. Uh, Raja Ghul versus Oliver was badass. This, uh, the way Raja Ghul just kicks his ass was awesome. And of course, they do the unspeakable, the unthinkable. They kill Oliver. Yes, apparently it is so. Oliver does lose the fight. And he dies. It, does he really die? I really don't know. It pretty much, the entire episode ends with Oliver being stabbed to death by Raj al Ghul, and then being kicked off the mountain and falling to his demise. And that's pretty much how Arrow ends. That's how the mid-season, the, the half of this season ends with Oliver dying, or possibly dying. Now, that's a big one that I really was not expecting. Granted, this was how my speculation was going into this episode that I thought was going to happen. Raj al Ghul and, and Oliver were obviously going to fight. I thought... Raj al Ghul would definitely be superior to Oliver, but Oliver would somehow find a way to beat Raj al Ghul and then kill him. But we get a, a post credit scene of Raj al Ghul being dumped into the Lazarus pit and coming back to life. That was something I was expecting, but this was completely 180 from that, obviously. I mean, Oliver dying, it was, it was definitely unspeakable. I did not think that was going to happen. Personally, I think it ended well. I think it was a good way to end it. Obviously, uh, as big of a Arrow fan as I am, and as big as a fan I am with Stephen Amell as an actor and as a person, I do feel that Green Arrow, in in general, would never stand a chance against Raj al Ghul. Whether it's from the TV show or from the comic books, he doesn't have a chance. Raj al Ghul is just too much for for Oliver. He just is, you know. And and I know Arrow does do you know, several things to depower supervillains, you know, like the same way they did with Deathstroke, you know, in the comic books, Green Arrow has no chance of beating Deathstroke, he knows that, Deathstroke is superior, same thing about Raja Ghul, Raja Ghul is superior, but I think it was a good way that they showed in this episode where it was like, Raja Ghul is superior, he knows it, Oliver knows it, and he presents it, and he executes it well, so I think that was good, overall, the episode was great, uh, the stunt work was pretty badass, even though uh, this episode didn't do that great of a job of hiding the stunt uh, coordinators. Uh, obviously, the stunt doubles, you can tell that obviously the actor who plays Roger Ghul wasn't doing all the stunts. Uh, we already know that, that you know, behind the scenes stuff that obviously CW and, you know, the people who work on Arrow and the stunt coordinators have to do the action and the actors can't. We already know that, but I thought they could have done a better job at, you know, not showing the stunts, you know, well, not, that's not what I mean, uh, not showing the, cu the, the cunts, not showing the stunts' face so much, you know, we, uh, like, every time you see Raj al Ghul and Oliver fight, you can just see that, yeah, that, the actor who plays uh, Raj al Ghul is obviously not doing all of his stuff, so, they could have done a better job at uh, presenting that, but overall, the fight in and of itself is definitely superior to any other fight, even the Destro, like, I put this against the Deathstroke slash Oliver fight in this one, this one is better than that one. And I'm a huge Manny Bennett, Slade Wilson fan, but this one was superior amongst others. You know, it was just so well done. It was, the cinematography was great. The stunt work was great. The action was awesome. 
The the conversation they had in between scenes were great. Uh, the way it ended was amazing. And uh, th I don't know. That That's pretty much all I can really say. It was just awesome. I give this episode a definitive 10 out of 10. It was definitely the best episode we got all season. And, you know, even though I'm a hardcore Arrow fan, there's been a pretty, you know, bunch of episodes that really weren't that good in this, you know, this overall season. But this one definitely takes the cake. It was awesome. It was epic. Raj Al Ghul kicked ass. He fucking literally kicked ass. And um, everything was just great. There were some things I didn't like, like the Laurel thing and the whole Thea thing was which, was kind of dumb and I didn't really like. But overall, it was amazing. It was, it was the creme de la creme of Arrow episodes. So that's just how I personally feel. Overall... I give the episode a 10 out of 10, but what do you personally think? Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, also in the comment section below, let me know what you personally think was the superior mid-season finale. Uh, excuse me, once again. Uh, which uh, uh, finale do you think was better, The Flash or Arrow? The Flash had better action, and it also had better surprises, but the ending to Arrow was way superior. As much as I love the whole Harrison Wells reveal, the Professor Zoom, Raj Al Ghul killing Oliver was just badass. It was just way... It was something I was not expecting. Like, I was expecting Harrison Wells to do something sketchy because we all know he's sketchy. But Raj Al Ghul killing Oliver, who knew that was going to happen? So, all, overall, they're both amazing mid-season mid finales. I like The Flash overall more than Arrow. But I think the finale definitely takes the cake with, with Arrow. I'm just saying, I'm a hardcore Raj, uh, Ray Jal Ghoul fan, and he killed it in this episode. Literally. No pun intended. But anyways, let me know in the comment section below what you personally think about this overall episode. What did you think about the mid-season finale? And what do you think about it compared to the Flash mid-season finale? And which one do you think was better? Overall, I go with Arrow, but what do you personally think? And that's saying a lot from a hardcore Flash fan. But anyways... That's going to be it. Uh, also, let me know what you personally think about uh, Arrow taking too much from Batman. Do you think it's a good idea or do you think it's a bad idea? And how much would it uh, would it be awesome if we got Batman in the CW universe in his full glory? Let me know what you personally think on that. And uh, what do you also think about the future of Arrow? Where does it go from here? Uh, obviously, Arrow has various other episodes that they're going to do. So, of course, Oliver possibly won't die, possibly isn't dead. But he definitely lost the fight and definitely fell to his demise. So, yeah, there's that. So, where's Arrow go from here? Um, we, we already know that, obviously, you know, there's a lot to be done. And uh, with the promo of uh, next, next episode, which uh, Arrow will be returning after Flash in January 21st, if I'm not mistaken. Which isn't that far away, folks. And uh, I guess we'll be picking up from there. But um, overall... Uh, I really don't know where they can go from here. Uh, do they do a rematch? How's that work? I don't really see how that could be done. And if Oliver did die, do they bring the Lazarus Pit into this? I don't know. Uh, we do know, based off the promo we got for the rest of the season, that someone definitely goes to ca uh, to capture Oliver's body. So, will the Lazarus Pit appear in the next episode? Let me know what you personally think about that. And do you think Oliver is really dead? I mean, we all know he isn't really dead. Because, you know, how do you have an Arrow show without, you know, your lead character? Unless they went crazy and fucking went like, you know, we're going to change the, the, fucking, the, the fucking format. We're going to change the title. Arrow is gone. It's all about Palmer. Yeah, fucking Palmer. Fucking straight up the Atom. That's the new shit. I doubt they would go that route. That's like really fucking going out there. But, you know, that's just a scenario I'm throwing out there for you guys. Anyways, mid-season finale. Epic as hell. Amazing. Loved it. Definitely super surprising. Did not expect any of it. And uh, it was just lovely. I'm just saying. it was. I'm going to watch it again after this. It was just so freaking awesome. But let me know what you personally think. Subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already. And of course, check out all the previous episodes I've done and reviewed over the course of the season. And of course, all the episodes I've done of The Flash. And I'll definitely be returning January 20th and 21st to review more episodes of The Flash and Arrow. So let me know what you personally think about all that awesomeness. And I'm going to end it right here. Uh, see you guys again back in January 20th and 21st for some more reviews. That's going to be it. Hope you guys enjoyed. And this has been John 12.